I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a lawyer. But I'm not a daft when it comes to the legal profession. There are lawyers that we talk. When I bring some contributions, they say, how did you know all this? Is this one still the Holy Spirit? I say, no. Information, I read. When I'm talking with doctors, there are things I say. And they say, how do you know all this? I said, I read. When I'm talking with bankers, there are those ones, there are things I say, they get thrown off. My, I have accountants here by the grace of God. And there are times we are talking, we are able to talk because we are on the same page. Get information. Get information. Read newspaper. It's not a sin. Read. Read. Relevant informations that matters to your life. Don't you carry uh, James Hadley Chase and you are reading. That's why they hardly chase you. Not reason astrology, zodiac sign. See, I'm a Scorpio. No one that Scorpions are biting you. Read things that matter to your destiny. Information. The Bible says, true knowledge shall the just be delivered. He that turneth his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be an abomination. An abomination. Tell somebody, get informed. Get informed. Get informed. Right knowledge settles freedom. The right knowledge settles freedom. The right knowledge settles liberty. The right knowledge settles emancipation. The right knowledge, am I communicating here? I tell somebody to get information. Tell someone get information. Let me go further and before I give you two points and then I'll pray. The Bible says when they entered the city, when they got in there, they found gold, silver. They ate two gold and silver and they kept it. When they kept it, before they went to inform others, they kept it. <laughs> they kept the gold. They kept the silver. It is the man that breaks the law that gets the best. Others came, but they didn't come for gold and silver. They came for food. <laughs> but these guys, they broke the law. <laughs> they took the gold. Their choice portions. They broke the law. They took the best. When they got the gold, they got the silver. They brought others to come and take the food and the ramen. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you can break out of the limitation in your family, you stand at an advantage to get the best. If you can break out of the limitation in your home, you stand at an advantage to get the best. The gold, the silver. If you can break out of the hindrance and what limited others you stand at an advantage maybe no one has gotten married in your family you will not just be the first to start it you will get the best marriage maybe no one has traveled abroad you will not be the first to travel only you will go to the best nation maybe no one has handled prosperity you will not just prosper you will be the best maybe no one has gotten greatness you will not just be great you will be the greatest lift up your hands and shout hallelujah lepers can feed a nation men that were rejected please this morning i am not here to talk to people who want to bless their families i am not here to talk to people who wants to bless their communities i'm not here to talk to people who want to bless their states i am here for people who have a generational mentality i am here for people who want to do what has not been done in their nation i am here for people who want to affect their world i am here for people who want to make impact in life it shall happen through your life it shall happen through your family it shall happen through your hands where no one can enter you will enter that place where no one could be you will become that thing what no one could handle you are going to handle it what no one could hold i see you holding it it will happen to your life i said to happen to your life Amen. lift your hands and shout hallelujah hallelujah paradasa they were informed Life is a risk. 
Life is a risk. Listen. Listen. The Bible says, they said to themselves, if we go to the city, we'll die. If we stay here, we'll die. Life is a risk. Until you see life as a risk, you cannot rise. It is better to, dry, to die trying than to die lying down. If you will die, let death meet you on the battleground, not the comfort zone. Men who take risk always rise. The late Archbishop Benson Dahosa said, it is a risk not to take a risk. Comfortable people don't make me impact. Peter was warming himself by the fire. He was warming himself in the cold. It was in that process he denied Jesus. Because men who go for comfort always lose their original identity. If comfort is your pursuit, then the best cannot be your achievement. If you want the best, you must discomfort yourself. Check any man today. How many of you know you cannot get the juice in orange until you squeeze it? Is that true? Until you squeeze orange, the juice doesn't come out. Until God squeezes you, the best does not come out. If the best must come out, God will make you uncomfortable. He will take you through process, take you through mountains, take you through high waters. He will take you to a point in life until you have gotten to a point in life where you can no more pray, all you are doing is worshipping. You have not seen shaking. You have lost prayer points. You have lost tongues. Your, your tongues have given way. All you are doing is just worshipping God. Knowing that there is God somewhere. Yeah, you must get to that point in your life. You don't understand. I've seen things in my life. Bro. What are the virtues in the lepers? What was the understanding they had that helped them? To feed the nation. Number one. If you, if you affect your generation, you must do the first thing they did here. The first thing the lepers did was that they capitalized on prophecy. Do you know before that time, in verse 1 and 2, Elisha just gave a prophecy that by this time, tomorrow. The lepers had it. There was no name on that prophecy. It was a general prophecy. So they, person ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. they personalized the prophecy. By this time, tomorrow. I'm not talking to anybody, but I'm talking to somebody. By this time, tomorrow. I'm not talking to everybody, but I'm talking to somebody. By this time, I prophesy. You are that person that will make impact in your world. You are that person that will make impact in your family. You are that person that will make impact in your community. Lift the one shot. Yes. Tell somebody there is a prophecy. Hey, it's about this time tomorrow. The lepers heard it. They said, no, this prophecy cannot be left standing. Does that tell you something? Before every challenge, because after that prophecy, there was a famine. Before every challenge, God sends a word. There is no challenge that comes on man unaware. Before every challenge, God sends a word. As they heard the prophecy, they took a step. Tell somebody, no matter the prophecy, take a step. Say, no matter the prophecy, take a step. Say, no matter the prophecy. There's a prophecy on you as a young lady that you are going to get married this year. Please change your outlook. Start dressing well, preparing for the prophecy. Not say, God say you are going to marry this year, then you leave yourself. You do, don't look well kept. You raise up your hand. Uzziah is coming from your armpit. Prepare well. Begin to dress well. Every, everything in life gravitates towards its kind. If you look like a tout, you will marry a tout. If you look ruffled, you marry someone who is ruffled. 
So when the word comes, take a step. God says you are going to get a good result. Start reading. Take a step. Take a step. Problem a lot of people have is that when prophecies are given, rather than people taking steps, they go to bed. After Elijah gave a prophecy in first, first Kings 17, verse 1, he said, There will not be rain according to my word. In verse 3, verse 4, the Bible says he withdrew himself and began to pray. After that prophecy, you don't fold your hands when a man of God prophesies on you. You don't fold your hand when the word comes on your head. You don't fold your hand when the scripture is released. After the prophecy, take a step. Am I communicating now? When you take a step, God backs you up and brings his words to pass. When you take a step, heaven opens for you and facilitates the prophecy. When you take a step, God moves speedily in your favor to bring to pass that which he has spoken. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard it. That power belongs to God. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. God told me. God told me. God told me. He said, if, if I tarry, if I tarry, that's God speaking. He said, if I tarry to come, if Jesus tarries to come, he said, before 2022, you would have covered the whole world. He told me, he said, by 2023, you will start afresh again. Start going around to the place you have been to. He said to me, you would have covered the world. That's a prophecy. Will I rest? I start walking with the prophecy. So for God to tell me I will cover the world, it means longevity is guaranteed. So if I want to cover the world at that time, and invariably live long, I should start walking. I should start walking. I should start walking. A prophecy comes, you don't fold your hand. God gives a prophecy about your prosperity. You get a seed and you activate. A young man in Kenya, a bishop, gave a testimony. He was struggling. Just a couple of months I was in Uganda. He was struggling to survive. To feed was a problem. He gave a seed in that meeting. And he said as he stood on that altar to testify in Nairobi, he had given out five cars as a dash. Why? He activated the prophecy. When prophecies are given, you do not go to bed. You activate the prophecy. You take a step if God has promised you a great destiny, you activate it. If God has spoken a word that you will prosper, you don't fold your hands. If you have to drop your car, you drop your car. If you have to drop your land, you drop your land. If you have to close your account, you close your account. This prophecy will not die. This prophecy must come to pass. Because there are, the Bible says, why men slept? An enemy came and so tears. If you go to sleep, the enemy can corrupt your prophecy. They can sow something that looks like your prophecy, but it is not your prophecy. You must activate your prophecy. You don't give up or fold your hands. Am I speaking here? As soon as Elisha spoke, this leper's capitalized on that prophecy. They had no name. They had no identity. It doesn't matter the personality. Whoever activates the prophecy become the first testifier. Whoever activates the prophecy become the first carrier. For the husband man is the partaker of the first fruit. Lift up your hands and shout hallelujah. Can I surprise you? These were lepers that were rejected by ordinary men. When testimony came, they sent message to the king. <laughs> to the king. Protocols were broken. Are you able to, say to see a governor, to see a president is hard. It is easy. Just do something abnormal. They will send for you. Those who followed us to Kenya can see the personalities in the program from the presidency. I'm not invite person, no. Now preach, I come preach. Protocols were broken. Those that mattered in the land had to come. Nobody invited, nobody said anything. Mattered had to come with humility. Am I talking to somebody? When you have the answer, you must have the audience. Am I communicating? 
have met all kinds of people in my young life by the grace of God, by reason of the anointing. These are people that others struggle and scramble to see by reason of the anointing. I have had presidents of nations call me on the phone and I said, please, can you call me back? I'm busy. And when they call me back, I'm still busy. When I'm busy, I'm busy. I've had presidents of African nations call me. I said, please, Mr. President, I do not take calls. Send me a text. This is a president of a nation. Why? The oil is there. If you don't come, somebody else will come. This is not pride. It is confidence. Capitalize on prophecy. Personalize it. Psalm 105 verse 19. Until the time his word came. He didn't say the, until the time the word is word. Personalize the Bible. When you read the Bible, it says, My God shall supply all, put your name, all Johnson Suleiman's needs according to God's riches in glory. For it is God that giveth Johnson Suleiman power to get wealth. I know the grace thou of the Lord Jesus. Though he was rich, he became poor, so that through his poverty, Johnson Suleiman can become rich until the time his word came. In the book of Luke chapter 5, if you read verse 4, Jesus said to all the fishermen, let down your nets, all of you, your nets, all of you. But in verse 5 of that Luke chapter 5, the Bible says, Peter said, nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down my nets. It was for everybody, but one man personalized it. And the Bible says he had fishes and the nets began to break. It was the fishes for everybody that one man collected. Why? Personalize it. When I say you shall not die, put your name there. When I say you will prosper, put your name there. When I say you will go abroad, put your name there. Am I talking to somebody right now? Personalize it. I'm going higher. I'm unstoppable. I'm a moving train. I'm a trailer without brakes. I'm a blazing mobile fire. I am an achiever. Success is my best right. I am at the apex of my life. I'm at the zenith of my destiny. I'm not going through a roller coaster stride. My life is going higher and brighter. It is my season. It is my time. There was a time Christians, pastors were against me. They had a meeting on me that nobody should invite me anywhere to preach. They don't understand this calling of names and all that. And I locked myself in my room. I said, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Greater is he. I am more than them. I am unstoppable. And God said to me, my son, begin to organize your own meetings. Don't preach for people. Organize your meetings. When I began to organize my meetings, I began to see times 10 of the crowd that I saw when I was preaching for them. Now they are begging me to preach for them. No more chance. Because I, there's no more chance. They say, please, even if it's 45 minutes, just come. I say, no chance. I only preach for people. Either you are my son or I have a relationship between ministry. But I was first rejected. I have seen the backside of the mountain. I have rode, the, I have rode on the ass that was dead. I have fought with the beast of Ephesus. I have seen the eyes of a python. I have been through shakings in ministry. I told them in Kenya there are four shaking in ministry. I have been through three of them. The fourth shaking, that shaking only comes when you are old. It's when you are old that you see that shaking. At that old age, that is when other things you labor for start scattering or they stand still. That shaking comes with age. You must get to 70, 80. I'm not there yet. But the other three shakings in ministry, I have seen it. I have seen what it means to be abandoned. I have seen what it means for liars to be hired to testify. Thank God everybody saw that one on the internet. I have seen what it means for people that 
you train to take arms against you. I have seen all kinds of shaking of people that you helped to carry alligator. I have seen all kinds of shaking, but it makes me better and younger. It makes me look fresh and strong. It doesn't matter what is being said about me. What I say about myself is what matters. I have personalized it. I am not a loser. I am a winner. I have personalized it. I am not at the bottom. I am at the top. So I can speak a word from the altar. How much you personalize it is what determines. There's a prophecy. And every prophecy has space. Squeeze yourself inside. Your place in the prophecy is your space in life. Tell your neighbor, your place in the prophecy is your space in life. Say that again. Say your, your place in the prophecy is your space in life. Ladies and gentlemen, do you know before that prophecy there was a law that lepers can't enter the city? But when they capitalized on the prophecy, the law was yearized. The prophecy is greater than the law. The prophecy is greater than the limitation. They say nobody in your family can buy a car. A prophecy is greater than that satanic pattern. They say no one can get married. A prophecy is greater. Can I prophesy? Can I prophesy? With my eyes open, I prophesy oh. upon your life. Oh. Every limitation in your family yeah. is broken today. Hey. I say it's broken today. Hey. It's broken today. Hey. Lift the words and shout hallelujah. Hey. your seat Mola Kaba you know there are people listen listen there are people listen to this very well it's going to help you there are people who have certain pattern in their family lines because of the fear of the pattern they don't take steps in our family anybody that marries outside this tribe dies oh so uh, fear Ah, in a family, ah, if you attempt to travel abroad, they will kill you. If you attempt to build a house, no, sir, build a house. Nobody can kill you. Build it. Build it. Let's break some laws now. Take step. You are too fearful. You are too fearful. Fear is a trap. Fear is a spirit. I told you the story of of a group. I told you the story before of a group, a drama group that was going to present a movie. And they wore their costume because they were late, so they couldn't dress in the venue. They had to dress on the way in the car. So the vehicle that dropped them said to them, I will only drop you at the junction of the street of the church. You come down from there. And on the street of that church, the church they were going to perform was inside. But there was a church in front. That church is the first church. Then there's another church inside the street. That's where they were going. So they wore their costumes ready. As soon as they came down from the car that carried them, it started raining. So the rain was about washing up their costume. So they decided, one of them was dressed like Satan, others were dressed like demon. So they decided to enter that first church to hide because of the rain with their costume. As they entered the church from the back, the first person that saw them was the pastor. The pastor said, ladies and gentlemen, Satan has entered the church. <laughs> so everybody started running. Some through the window. Some through the door. People were squeezing themselves. Meanwhile, it was costume that they were wearing. Even the pastor took the mic and took off. The, the church was empty. Only one old woman was remaining. The old woman was remaining because she could not run. She was too old to run. So the pastor, the, the, the young man behaving like Satan, started moving towards her like Satan. He said, Mama. The woman said, Oh, devil. He said, Devil, I know that you know everything. Just now, when they were binding you, did you hear my voice? <laughs> Fear! 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 
is a spirit. If fear is the opposite of faith, and faith coming by hearing, it means fear can also come by hearing. There are things you hear that make you afraid, but fear has torment. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, of power, and of a sound mind. Number two, I'm, I'm working with time. I'm preaching next woman this morning. As soon as I leave here, I'm preaching next woman. So, those of you who came down, I want to see Papa. May God deliver you. Somebody will leave his plan, his village, and a busy man of God that is this busy. You want to come and see me without appointment, and you leave, you say you are disappointed. I wish you well. When you see a man's schedule, you plan on how to see him. You don't just pounce on him. Hello? How many people agree with me? With this pressure on me all over the world, if I satisfy everybody, I will break down. You can't satisfy everybody. You can't. If you cannot take the word, most people who are in a hurry, under pressure to see me, actually always have nothing to say. That's the truth. They come before me, they are telling stories, repeating their problem. I say, is this what you could not believe God? They have nothing to say. I'm telling you. And I'm not a man of God who doesn't want to see people. Some people here in church can tell you, there are certain messages you will send me. I'll say, come. Am I correct? Because I know this is an emergency, but if you tell me I want to see you, I will not reply you. That's the truth. Because I'm under pressure. Just tell me what the matter is. I will send for you. From the issue, I will know this is not something that I can pray over the phone. Come over. Hallelujah. If you don't believe in my pastors, then you don't believe in me. That's the truth. The anointing of my life has been extended to them. So if you can't see me, see them. They'll pray for you. 